When I was a kid, I had heroes like we all did. Figures we used to guide and inspire us. Here are a few of mine. Chuck Berry, Mark Twain, Walt Disney, and Jim Henson. Now, because of Chuck Berry, I learned to play a little guitar and have had a lifelong love affair with rock and roll. Because of Mark Twain, I enjoy reading and writing. And because of Walt Disney, I spent my entire childhood drawing and dreaming. But Jim was different. I loved his characters, and his sense of humor did a tremendous job of helping me develop my own. But I could not figure out how to do what he did, even on a very basic level. It was not within my skill set, and there seemed no way of learning it. But that was before the internet. Now we have no excuse. So, a couple years ago, at the age of 30, I found a pattern for a puppet online, got some scrap fabric, borrowed a sewing machine from my mom, and taught myself how to sew. This is my first puppet. It took me weeks, and while I may look pretty good for a first attempt, it is rigid as a brick and not practical as a puppet. Oop. This is my second puppet. Instead of learning to do one pattern correctly, I was already changing it to create new creatures. I still haven't figured out that I could buy or make small clothing, so I was stitching the clothing in as part of the body. And I used ping pong balls as the eyes, just like Kermit. Still not a workable puppet. But I kept making puppets. I wasn't doing anything with them. Now I have a degree in film, so I wanted to integrate my puppets into film projects. So I threw up a bedsheet, shot several puppets singing along to the golden age of rock and roll by Mott the Hoople, and started creating paper mache props and practicing my lip syncing skills. Now for the next video, with a little help from my friends, the Joe Cocker version, I built a set out in our sped I built a set in our spare bedroom, three feet off the ground, a foot of half away from the wall, lots of cabinets, doors, and openings. At this point, my hobby was actually taking over my life. Uh, this video, we also had friends involved, which helps because you can have two puppets in one shot at the same time. So for my next project, I, I needed to get me and the puppets out of the house. More than anything, I needed to prove I could do this on a professional level. I wanted to do a music video, so I picked one of my favorite local bands, Pacifico, and talked with them about an idea I had for one of their songs. I also got my friends over at Tommy's TV to come play along. They're cool because they bring professional camera, lights, and crew. The video is about feeling like a freak until you meet someone just like you, represented by two puppets meeting in a bar full of human beings. Combining puppets and people in the real world comes with its own set of problems. Uh, nothing is built to fit a two-foot puppet or a six-foot puppeteer underneath him, but we did it, and I'm super proud of it. Now, all this was well and good, but this hobby was taking up a lot of my time and not making any money, so I started to make puppets to sell. I made some LSU and Saints-themed puppets in an unsuccessful attempt to sell out, as well as some pink flamingo puppets for Spanish Town. But these monster puppets have done the best. I love them. They're fun, and there's no end to what you could do with them. Teeth, horns, fingernails, wacky ears and eyes. These brought out my inner child like no other. Now, fur is a pain to work with, and if you look closely on me right now, there are brightly colored fur all over the place. <laughs> the next, my friends at Tommy's TV introduced me to Baton Rouge's own food and beverage superhero, Jay Dakota. <laughs> Jay is lucky enough to get sent free alcohol for him to sample and write about. So sweet. And this was looking, he was looking for a fun, interesting way to do these reviews. Puppets are both fun and interesting, and Free Booze Friday was born. It's an internet series that found a home on Geek Nation. Now, this series put several uncooperative puppets in front of the bar with Jay pouring drinks behind it. It was the first time that I did person, uh, I did character work with the puppets. Now, my character's name was Lorraine. She's a middle-aged divorcee from Long Island with a questionable number of ex-husbands and a thing for Jay. <laughs> All right, so at some point during a lull, I was trying to figure out what my next project was going to be. A college friend sent me this contest information. The Jim Henson Company, the whole reason I was building puppets, was doing a dark crystal fan film competition. Just make a short film in the world of the dark crystal movie. I actually shrugged off the idea at first. I wasn't making that kind of puppet. Jim had created the Muppets, which is basically what I was doing. But for the film Dark Crystal and the Labyrinth, he was creating much more advanced creatures. I felt this contest was out of my league. But fate had other plans. For a long time, people had been telling me I needed to meet this guy, Barton Jilly. And I did, quite by accident, at the Baton Rouge Mini Maker Fair, where he was showing his fully working R2-D2 that he built. He had also heard about the contest, but wasn't going to do it because he wasn't a filmmaker. I think you see where this is going. 
We spent the next five months writing, designing, building, and fighting a movie into existence. I wrote the script, we designed the characters, and I spent months building the environments for our main character, Twiggly, to live in. Every plant and leaf was handmade. When creating an alien world, I find it's best not to go to the garden store, but to create something new. Twiggly was designed by Barton, uh, he built an animatronic puppet. First it is sculpted out of clay, then a mold is made, then you end up with a silicone skin that is put over a skull that is fitted like clockwork with tiny servos and motors and the control wires that make facial features move. It's amazing. We filmed it over a weekend. We got the guys from Tommy's TV to produce it. A bunch of my friends came out to help. Now that weekend could be a Pika Kucha, however you say it talk all by itself. Uh, I'm really proud of my team. Everybody went way above and beyond the Call of Duty. The struggle was real. And we didn't win the competition. We got an honorable mention. But the film, the product, Twiggly's Battle, is the most proud I have ever been as a filmmaker. It's led me to a wonderful partnership with Barton, and I was able to accomplish a childhood dream that I always thought was impossible. Artists don't create win contests. I've gotten ahead of myself. I can't believe it. <laughs> Way ahead. Artists don't create to win contests. We create because we have to. Each creation brings us down a different path. For me, the best thing about being an artist is not being boxed in and getting to try everything. I was 30 when I began the journey that led me here today. But this isn't the only road out there, and I can't wait to create my next adventure. Thank you, guys.